first at four, new COVID rules from Comerica Park to your local high school sports team. We're going to talk about the changes Governor Whitmer is putting into place. Also, how far apart is far enough? The CDC has new guidelines today that will affect classrooms all across the country. You'll witness one family celebration on a very big day. It's a story with a message for little girls all over Metro Detroit. Plus, here's Andrew. And Karen, what a, what a day to celebrate some wonderful weather. The winds are calmer, still chilly outside, but we have blue skies. How, is it go, how does it go into the weekend? More on your weather forecast, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News first at four starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. Michigan's governor is both sounding the alarm and loosening some outdoor COVID restrictions. Governor Whitmer's balancing act makes it crystal clear we are at a tipping point in the battle against the virus. First, the reason for concern, positive test rates and hospitalizations are up in Michigan. We could be on the verge of a fourth wave if we're not careful. One area of concern, high school athletics. So the governor is adding a new level of protection, but she's also boosting stadium capacity just in time for Tigers opening day. Kimberly Gill following the latest. Kim, let's start with the big news for baseball fans. Lots of happy people there. Karen, hi, good afternoon. The governor was facing pressure from Republican lawmakers to loosen the stadium restrictions. There are economic considerations and bigger crowds represent a return to the normal life we're all craving, of course. Well, the governor and state health department are boosting capacity at outdoor stadiums to 20 percent. That would allow about 8,200 fans at Comerica Park on opening day, which is set for April 1st. But infection control plans must remain in place, including face masks when not eating or drinking. The Detroit Tigers say single game tickets will go on sale March 25th. The team says it's thrilled to welcome back more fans, but it has a list of comprehensive safety measures visitors will need to follow. On the other hand, Governor Whitmer wants to get better control of COVID spread among high school athletes. The state is reporting an increased number of outbreaks associated with youth sports. So starting Monday, young athletes ages 13 to 19 will need to be tested for COVID once a week in order to practice and play games. The state's top doctor says we need to fight the virus spread, especially these newer variants. Outbreaks in this age group can have an impact on our children's education. The most important thing we all want for our children is to have in-person learning and not have school closures or children out of school because of having COVID-19 or needing to quarantine because they have been exposed. If we want to continue taking steps forward, we need to make smart choices to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. To get these variants under control, we've got to keep tracking them and following basic public health measures that we know work. Wear your mask, socially distance, wash your hands, stay home if you're not feeling well. Today, the state is reporting more than 3,700 new cases, illustrating that increase we've been talking about. Plus, we've seen an additional 15 deaths. The de governor says it's time for all of us to pull together, prevent the spread of COVID, and get vaccinated when it's your turn. We'll be digging into the many different angles of this story when you join us for Local 4 News at 5 and 6. For now, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Kim. Sure. Here's the big news from the CDC today. Experts there now say students can be safe sitting just three feet apart. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention relaxing the guidance that called for kids to be six feet apart while in class. Students still are required to wear face masks and the six foot guidance is still in place at sporting events, lunch assemblies or choir practice. Revised recommendations give schools more latitude to get more kids into the classroom. New at six, my local administrators say the new guidelines help face to face learning, but parents really hold the key to safety and success. All right, were you out walking the dog this morning? Because it did feel like winter, but we are officially headed into spring tomorrow. Let's bring in Andrew Humphrey in for Ben to get us through this transition. Andrew. Well, words we've been waiting for, right, Karen? The last full day of winter, it is upon us right now. And during this last afternoon, it feels pretty good out there. Sure, it's on the chilly side. You might need your jacket for a time, but grab your sunglasses too. Temperatures in the 40s, 45 degrees over at Metro Airport with beautiful blue skies overhead. Now, it feels like 41 or in the upper 30s, so wind chills not as brutal as they have been over the past few days and certainly earlier this season. And yes, we are in for another chilly to cold night, just like last night. We had 
temperatures in the 20s last night. Same thing overnight. Temperatures by later this evening will easily make it down into the 30s by the time you join us tonight at 11 o'clock. Is any more sunshine in the way for both Saturday and Sunday? You know there is, but what about higher temperatures? More on that and your seven day forecast in minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew. Now to a story that we've been following all week. A 13 year old boy stabbed in Detroit. His 15 year old brother will now face charges. Police tell us the older teenager has been charged as a juvenile with assault and domestic violence. The attack happened Wednesday at a home on Asbury Park near I-96 in Greenfield. Police say the two got into an argument and the younger brother was stabbed in his stomach. At last check, he's still in the hospital. The 15 year old is being held at a juvenile detention center. A judge makes two key rulings in the trial for the former Minneapolis police officer charged with killing George Floyd. Today, the judge denied a request from Derek Chauvin's attorneys to delay or move the trial. They argued last week's announcement of a $27 million settlement with the Floyd family would taint the jury. The judge also ruled the jury could hear limited evidence from a 2019 arrest of George Floyd, but only information that relates to his 2020 case will be allowed. Today, a 13th juror was seated. Only one more is needed for the trial. Police say nothing is off the table in the investigation of the deadly shootings at the Atlanta area spas. 21 year old Robert Aaron Long is charged with murdering eight people Tuesday, six of them Asian women. Police still say they're looking into whether this was a hate crime. The medical examiner continued to identify more victims today. Of the four identified, three had been shot in the head. Atlanta police say they're working with the Korean consulate to notify family members. Meantime, right now, President Biden and Vice President Harris are in Atlanta meeting with Asian American leaders to talk about the attacks and the threats against the community. They were originally visiting Georgia to tout the passage of the COVID relief bill, but shifted gears after the shootings. The president and Vice President started the trip by making right. their first visit to the CDC headquarters. They thank the scientists and workers for their efforts in fighting the pandemic. All right, let's move to a big tradition for local medical students and their families. Today is match day, and that is when future doctors find out where they will take the next step in their training. Paula Tutman shows you the joy of a special moment and how family support can really help make dreams come true. For every student who's made it through the grueling coursework, long hours, sleepless nights, oppressively expensive price tag, there's an important story of sacrifice for any and every medical student on match day. You've ranked your preferences, and now inside an envelope is the answer to where do I go from here? For Oakland University's William Beaumont Medical School, 123 students find out where they'll be doing their residencies. And in communities across Michigan, this. <laughs> a family's life flipped upside down in a moment in the best possible way. Congratulations, yeah! Yeah, baby! Uh, don't cry, baby, don't cry. Don't cry, baby. I got my number one choice. Uh, you up. did. You no, know, I was happy for her no matter where she was going to go. Wherever she was going to match, I was happy for her because they were all great schools. But I can't lie, I was happy that she is going to Spectrum. She's going to be right here with us. Ariana Sharak, 27 years old, is the culmination of generations of dreaming. Her father came to the U.S. from Iraq at age 16 to work in his family's business. I am first generation American and student, so I'm the first person to go to college and graduate from college in my family. In White Lake Township at Graceland King Euro and Wine Shop, which boasts the best Euro anywhere, this family's all-American dream has come true. I matched into general surgery, so I'll be doing general surgery for five to seven years. And then um, I can specialize in any type of surgery I want after that. So it could be heart surgery, pediatric surgery, cancer surgery. Here we are in our Euro shop in a restaurant. I'm the daughter of an immigrant and blue collar workers. And now I'm gonna be a surgeon. And so I think for everybody, the sacrifice is worth it. And if you set your sight on something, you can achieve anything. And for the soon to be Dr. Chirac, while the journey continues, it is a journey to be relished. She's known she's wanted to be a doctor since she was a kid and she's worked hard at it since she was as long as we can all remember, really. When a little girl tells you that she wants to do something, just believe in her, don't question, don't doubt her, because the people here never questioned me. They never doubted me, they encouraged me every single day of my life, and that's why I am where I am today. So if a little girl tells you that she's dreaming something, 
It's true. Just believe in her and encourage her. Congratulations, doctor. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know what? This just might be my favorite story this year, Karen. I, I I can't stop smiling. I'm I'm so pleased for this young woman. Of course, no time to tarry, no time to waste, no time to rest. Uh, this new generation of doctors, they, they, they've got to get busy saving lives, certainly in the nick of time. But, well, how about that? If a little girl tells you she can do something, you got to believe her. I just love it. Paula, I really love this story in so many different levels. Of course, that little yeah, girl too. saying she has this dream, but also the way you did that interview, you had Ariana there, but her whole family was like right behind her in that Zoom, and you could tell that love <laughs> and support. Like, they were just so thrilled. It was, it was great. I, Karen, I can't take credit for that video. I think that was her brother, and you could see the camera flipped upside down. I mean, you could just feel that pure organic joy. It yeah. was, it, it's an amazing way to, to end the week. It really is. Congratulations to her and her family. What a great story. Thanks, Paula, for bringing it to us. Still ahead here first at four, President Biden versus President Putin. Their relationship has taken a very competitive tone with a new challenge from Russia. We'll explain that. Also coming up, kangaroo's narrow escape. It's one of two animal stories from down under. The other one might have you thinking about jumping on a chair. And later, you're looking at the happiest country on earth. You can probably tell from this video it is not the United States. We'll tell you where America stands in trending stories.